Welcome to Wine Time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We are here in beautiful Solomons because we are three ladies who love wine. Yes. I'm Nikki. I'm Gwen. I'm Carolyn Hart. And we're so excited to be chatting with you guys about wine. So I'm a chef. I own No Time to Cook. This is, this is our upstairs kitchen, one of two kitchens that we have here. And um, so my role in this whole thing is to talk about how food pairs with wine. And um, we're excited to create some dishes for you today to uh, go with the rosés. Mm -hmm. And if you've not been to her beautiful location, you need to get here. Um, she has two floors. Her class, You're always busy on the weekends. Okay. Oh, it's, it's crazy. Four events on a given Saturday is And you do typical. all different foods. Uh, different. Uh, mm -hmm. My son is going to kids' classes, adult yep. classes, uh, private parties. Yep. We just did a retirement party. We did. And we did. Just a little bit of everything. We'll talk about the tacos that we did. And you uh, serve wine. Party, and we serve wine. Mm -hmm. Because street tacos and rosé go beautifully together. Oh, I guess we'll find out. Yep. Okay. Um, so I'm Carolyn Hart. My husband and I own uh, Patuxent Wine and Spirits. We have been in business for 10 years. Cheers. 10 years. Cheers. Cheers. Huge accomplishment. Yes. So I am the primary wine buyer for our uh, for our business, and um, I am here just to kind of point out some great bottles, um, the differences between them. There are so many great bottles of wine out there. Uh, don't always get the same thing. Try something new. Um, we're going to try to help you pick. You know, give you some guidelines, some tips to help you pick out the best bottle for your occasion. We are, um, we are here for you to try the wines. <laughs> we will try you. the wine Somebody for you. Has to. Absolutely, <laughs> that's what we do. Because so we what care. You guys, exactly, we're here. We're here we're to do the tough jobs. Yeah. Um, what do you guys think of the first one that we're trying? This oh, is actually um, I brought a couple of things uh, to try today because if you can't tell, this is about rosés. Exactly what Nikki said. Um, rosé made. Yes, it is um, actually my favorite time of the year to buy wine. Really? It is. It is. I mean, and I buy wine a lot. Why? But Why? Because it's rosé season? Or? It is. It means warm weather is coming. Yep, right. Um, it's Agreed. just food. Uh, great <laughs> it's food. All about, it, for me, you know, it's not just the rosés, but it's, okay, you have, we were going to talk about Cinco de Mayo, and then you have Mother's Day, mm -hmm. which I love to get spoiled on Mother's Day. I also yeah. have my birthday in May. And I love to get spoiled on my birthday. I love rosés, and we, then we have Memorial Day. It's just, yeah. it's family fun. You're outdoors. You're outdoors again. I think yes. Yes. Yeah, such a huge thing. And you drink wine. A lot of it. Yeah. I do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm not a beer person. So, so let's back up for a second. Okay. And because let's talk about how rosés are made. Because I think there's a lot of mis, you know, there is. information yes. about people think it's its own varietal and it's not, right? Well, we talked about this once before, just the three of us sitting around chatting. Mm -hmm. And we said, so many people keep coming up to us saying, well, what's a blush? What's a rosé? Yeah. What's a, you know, a white zin? What are the differences? And mm -hmm. a rosé, they're basically all the same thing. So when you're making a rosé, you're taking your wine, and it's usually a red wine. It can be made with a white grape, just so people know. But it, for the most part, when the darker the color, the darker the color of the wine or the grape that was being used. Right. They're just taking the grapes, they're leaving the skins in during the processing, and they only take about like two or three hours. Then they pull the juice out. And when they're pulling the juice out, that's where you get that beautiful color, because it hasn't sat with the grape that long, with the skins. The darker the color, the longer time it's spent with the skins. Mm. Now a blush is essentially the same thing, but in California, when they were starting to make the rosés, there was a lot of people who, again, didn't understand what a rosé was. And a blush was kind of a nice way of saying, it's just a hint of color. Mm. So it was kind of a gimmick, if you will, but it, it caught on. Yeah. And a white zin was one of those first blushes. Everybody started thinking, that's what a rosé is. And it's so not. It's it's a very different animal. It's very right. sweet, and people just, I think rosé's got a bad rap in this country because they associated them with white zins. So we're gonna have to down this and go to the next one, that's my opinion. Okay. okay. Cheers. Okay. Cheers. <laughs> right. Keep cheering all day. You know what they say too when you cheer? That you have to like look each other in the eye fully. If you don't, it's seven years of bad sex. Oh, well cheer. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> Think of all the times you haven't done that <laughs> when you were cheering. I guess it didn't affect me. <laughs> hmm. Carol, you had a opinion poll that you did. Yeah. You want to talk a little bit about the opinion poll because it really kind of I did. Bit surprising. So <laughs> for the first time, um, 
And I mean, I ask people's opinions on wines all the time, mm -hmm. but I actually put a poll um, out on a couple of different of our social media um, avenues and just asked them what was, why, how did they select their rosés? Yeah. Was it by, um, by grape? Was it by um, label or was it by price? Mm -hmm. And I did it in a couple of different um, um, areas. And the feedback actually was, it was number one by label. I believe um, that. I so believe that. when you're picking a new rosé, they didn't pick, they didn't look at region or grape type or price point. It was by the label. Yeah, that right. was number one. I read the poll. Yeah. And I just want to back up really fast because the first opinion was whatever Carol says. Yeah. Okay. That was on that there. was number one. That was Fair that enough. was one of our customers. It was pretty funny. <laughs> yeah. And then right in. Yeah. She had to pry them and say, okay, but if I'm not in the store, what would you pick? If I'm in the restroom, which one will you pick? <laughs> Don't you think that's how people pick most wines? Not just rosés, but. But yeah. I mean, unless there you're are a really, of people. If, you're, if you're sort of like trying to, you, know, you don't know a lot about that particular varietal, I think people go with pretty. There were a couple of people that did say, I, I research it and, and look up the label and, and, and go with the yeah. winery that I know. But mo for the most part, it was, it was hands down. It was the label. So this Which, guy's the Yes, winner. I know. <laughs> so this actually was one, um, it's Wolfer Estate. It's called Summer in a Bottle. It's actually from Long Island. Yeah. I mean, not a place that you would think. No. But um, this is a wine that took me, uh, I read about it three years ago, couldn't get it two years ago, finally got it last year, yeah. sold out of it, and then finally got a little bit more in. So, so but that's just like? the prettiest wine. It is pretty. Um, it, it's honestly just fruit forward. It's yeah. got a lot of peach and strawberry. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, yeah. it's right, so the most Googled rosé. So if we're, if we're talking about pretty bottles, are we going to France then? Um, actually, we can, um, or this one's a little bit neat, too. Um, I'm excited to try that. Okay. New I don't yeah, know that I've had a New Zealand rosé, you know, so. In New Zealand rosés, and the reason why I picked it, it's not, you know, when you think about New Zealand, you think about Sauvignon Blanc. Yes. I mean, bottom line. Always. Um, it's probably a big pour. You're going to have to really glass. It. It's a good thing you're not uh, driving anymore. That's right. I live here. I mean, look at the color. It's really lovely. So the difference between New Zealand and California versus France is that New Zealand, their rosé season is opposite. Same thing with Australia. So their rosé season, their 2018s were being, you know, pressed and pulled and bottled before ours were even being harvested. Right. So that's the kind of nice thing about a New Zealand rosé. The other difference is your Pinot Noir is completely different. Mm -hmm. All your grapes are always different in a warmer climate. Yeah. And where New Zealand's, uh, most of their vineyards are, it's a very warmer tropical climate, mm -hmm. if you will. It's not tropical when you think of like jungle, right. but it still is a warmer South climate. Equator. It is. So yeah. their Pinot Noir has a little bit more of a juicier or jammier flavors, whereas your Pinot Noir from California, France is going to be a little bit more earthy. Your Oregon Pinot Noirs, your you know, Washington Pinot Noirs are all very earthy. This is gonna be a little bit more jammy here. Oh, this is really full bodied. It just bright acidity. This is fabulous. Mm -hmm. So when you think about, and the reason why we brought this, that smells um, amazing. When you think about yes, Sauvignon French. Blanc, I mean, think of how much Sauvignon Blanc that is enjoyed <clears throat> all year round. This is all year round. I mean, it's a oh, huge, yeah. right. huge category of wine, and people still have not picked up that there is rosé as an option. And I think right. once they start realizing that, that it's a year if you can still have that bright, that bright, crisp wine in a rosé, you know, I think some people are going to try something new. So yeah, it's just a totally different style no, than a California. I don't know if you were there when Carol and I did the. Um, Froze. No, I missed that. that. So I'm going to tell you how I did this please, because this was please. so fun. So we took the, I took the Matua and I put it in just a big giant gallon Ziploc bag and I froze it overnight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the next day I brought it into her store for a tasting and it was, of course it's frozen, but I also had some simple syrup with some fresh strawberries that I mm -hmm. made. Yep. Mm -hmm. it, I mean, it's like 10 minutes on the stove with strawberries. Yeah. Simple syrup, for those you don't know, is equal parts water and sugar, sugar, and then you can add any sort of infusion you want to it. Strawberries are awesome. Strawberries, We've done it with fresh herbs, thyme, yeah, anything. Yeah. 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 It's awesome. And I took so I took my my homemade simple syrup, and then I took the um, kettle one botanicals. Yes, that rose grapefruit one yep. is so amazing smelling. It's yeah. just amazing. It, it's it's mm. it's a great vodka a specialty drink down here. Oh yeah, day. so we we do combine the three of them, and I got to tell you that rose for the tasting. There was quite a few people with rose tasting. Well, and then you cut out a watermelon. 
Oh, well, yeah. What? She well, cut out the watermelon. The only crafty put, thing I know how to do. She put the froze <laughs> in the open watermelon. Get out of yeah. Town. And then, what, like, ladled it up and put it in the cup and served it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it ran out really yeah. fast. Too fun. See, really fast. This is why people think of rosé in the spring and the summer. Because it's just, it, it's fun. The color, first of all, just screams spring, right? Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, it's, and the, you know, it's, one of the things I love about rosé is that it sort of has one foot in the white world and one foot in the red world. Mm -hmm. And so, right. but it has the benefits of both. And the cool thing about it, too, is um, that you kill it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if, if you're going mm -hmm. red, but you want it to be a little on the colder side, rosé is a perfect choice, and it goes fabulously with food. Julia Child, in fact, said rosé goes with everything. It pretty but much it does. does. She did, yeah. I, be, I mean, I, it really does. It yeah. goes with, I mean, do you want to have a steak in the summer? Your barbecue and throw some steaks on the grill? Yeah. You can drink a rosé with a steak. Absolutely. Yes, you do also drink cabs, but... Well, this is amazing. Right. And in the summer, maybe you don't want, like when it's, you know, right. 85 degrees outside and high humidity, maybe you don't want a heavy cab. This is a perfect, a darker, you know, mm -hmm. rosé is a great way to go. So tell us about our Cinco de Mayo. I know you're okay. too. Yep. So this is not really a holiday that you associate food with. I mean, not, I'm sorry, with, with wine with, typically. Well, you think beer. That is my birthday. Think, Cinco de Mayo okay, is my birthday. So I think actually, wine all Actually, Cinco de Mayo is your birthday. Actual days is, is oh, single really? Wow. Every year. Yeah, because it's on the 5th of May. Wait, so. The whole world celebrates your birthday. Well, that's why they celebrate. <laughs> that's right, because Nikki was born. It's all about me. <laughs> but typically, it's not um, a holiday that you think to drink wine with. You mm -hmm. think beer with wine, you think margaritas. margaritas right. But margaritas. Um, come to tell you what, rosés, and in this case, what we have are some mahi mahi grilled tacos. Mm -hmm. They have a lovely uh, slaw on them. Then we made a cilantro lime mm -hmm. crema and then a pineapple cilantro salsa on top of that too. But with this, what you really want, because we've got a lot of, um, got a lot of spice happening here, mm -hmm. you want to pick one of the fruitier rosés mm -hmm. to go with this. Because rosés really do, you know, sort of vary on the spectrum it's from vast. crazy dry to fruitier and, and and, and then there are some and so, really sweet ones. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. So with something that has a lot of spice to it, you really, really want to go on the fruitier side. It's all about balance with food and wine. It's about balance, you know, in everything we do, but particularly when you're pairing these two together. So go mm -hmm. fruitier for a dish like this. Yeah. Yeah, but don't shy away from wine for Cinco de Mayo. No, don't shy away from any spicy food and wine. Yeah. I know a lot of people do, but like you said, if you're balancing it, your brain tells you what you want. Exactly. It'll say, I don't want the cab. But right. you might say, ooh, I really like that soft ball. Yep. And your brain will automatically tell you what you want. Absolutely. And if your brain does it, your palate will. Yes. You might go, hmm, not so much. Right. <laughs> mm -hmm. Doesn't mean it won't, that wines won't work, it just means you haven't found the right one. Right. That's why we're here to help. All right, so we're downing this one, we're moving from New Zealand. Yeah, to one that, there's a little story behind this one. Like Nikki's the bottle. bottle. It's pretty. It is very pretty. It's well, you frosted. have to do it. You, it's a glass stopper mm -hmm. that everybody tells me all the time. When you have a glass stopper, it doesn't hold the air mm. or anything out. So, just to prove it, uh, it doesn't come out. This thing is well, tight. I didn't hear that because we just cut the floors clean. So. I know. I just yeah. them. <laughs> well, you know, if, it, if, if any spills, I'll be down there licking it up. So it's perfectly okay. <laughs> and the glass stoppers are really easy. You just like push them with your thumb. Yeah. But. Um, I do, this is the pretty bottle we were talking about earlier. Remember I said they buy labels, mm -hmm. bottles, okay, so. See, because cool bottles like that you can totally reuse for other things. I, I, well, water in kombucha, mine. use them as a vase, use them as water bottles. All okay, water. I wasn't thinking about that two years ago when I told her no, I didn't want to carry it. <laughs> so, she truth be told, <laughs> yes, she brought this bottle in to see me last year. Are you ready? Oh, I'm not ready. ready. Yeah. All right. So this is Notorious Pink. It's a Grenache-based uh, wine. It is French. Um, it is, it's a beautiful pale salmon, salmon so we color. we should tell people that Grenache is a sweeter grape, but when yes. we say sweeter, we mean it's not as dry as a Cab or a Merlot. This is a just, a, a, similar to a Riesling, it can, it can mimic. Yeah. So it's not a sweet wine like Moscato. When we say sweeter, it is not a Moscato. No, but it doesn't have that as much acidity as like a New no. Zealand one that's very no. refreshing and crisp. It's just nice and soft and easy very drinking. Easy to yeah. This has tremendous strawberry flavors. They're mm -hmm. just berries that are just bursting out of this. It's, it smells so fabulous. Nice. 
And this is going to go great with our next dish um, that will celebrate moms for mm. Mother's Day. We're going, my suggested pairing for this wine, a mm -hmm. drier, mm -hmm. sort of more minerally uh, rosé, would be a Nisoise salad. It's mm. very classic, very classic dish. It, you, you heard that saying, what uh, grows together goes together. Mm -hmm. it, it meant to imply um, the whole concept of terroir. So if the grapes are growing in the south of France, then that dish from the south of France is going to work beautifully together. So a Nisoise salad is a very classic salad from the south of France. It's a lovely, it's like bib lettuce or a mixed mm -hmm. greens, whatever you like. Yeah, and then you have um, green beans, hard cooked pot uh, potatoes, um, eggs, you have tuna on it. I'm just gonna wipe the drool off. Oh my god. And then it's sort of Dijon vinaigrette that goes with it. Oh. Just the two just are perfect that together. Fantastic and it's a lovely this. light meal for Mother's Day. It's easy to make if you're not even uh, like you know used to cooking a lot. It's a very easy thing to do. Explain the terroir <clears throat> though, because you're explaining it, you're saying that, but maybe oh, some sorry. people don't sure. understand about that. Yeah, so terroir is all about where the grapes, the, where the food are grown. It's not just the soil, it's the, the wind that comes off of the Mediterranean. You know, it's the humidity, it's, um, it's all of those factors that come together. It's the slope. What creates those amazing grapes, but creates the, the olives, you know, all of that stuff that goes mm -hmm. into both the food and the wine. And usually you can smell it in the wine, which is why you mm -hmm. always see people who do this in their glass, it's to, open up the smell. Yeah, it looks snotty when we do it, but it, I know, there's a real it reason for it. I get yeah. looked at a lot in restaurants when I'm like, <laughs> but it does, and it's, it. your nose immediately preps your brain, mm -hmm. so it tells your brain what's coming. Yeah. So you smell it and you go, oh, I smell strawberry. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's amazing. And your brain gets ready for it, and that's, your palate starts salivating, and then when you have this amazing salad, your brain is already enjoying it, yep. which is why wine and food Exactly. That's what I love about it. It's such a fun um, sort of, you know, thing to play with because the the food will always change how the wine tastes. Mm -hmm. Never the other way around. But so when people say, you know, oh, I don't drink rosés or I only drink cab, I always say, you know what, try, just try it with the food. I get it if you just don't want to sit and, you know, watch the sunset right. with a full glass right. of it. You know, I'm, there are certain wines that I don't love for that, but with the right food pairing, it can take it from meh to super cool. Right. And there's so many choices out there. Yes. I just think people just need to, to be more adventurous and try things. Right. You really don't, do. don't shy from the bottle, but also trust your wine shop owners right. to mm -hmm. tell you. To steer you in the right direction. Right. Because there are amazing wines at every price point. You, know, you there don't are. have to spend $40, yeah. $50 on a bottle. They get a great bottle. They just need to know that they have someone they right. can come to who can that tell they them. trust. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. That will tell them the right. And it's not just that uh, I may go into my lovely wine shop owner and tell her, you know what, tonight I am making, I'm trying to think of, um, what did we have one time? Those Moroccan meatballs. Yes. They were so amazing. For Moroccan meatballs. So I may go into, I'm having Moroccan meatballs. What kind of wines are paired with that? And I want to keep it under 30 bucks. Mm -hmm. And she's going to be able to steer me to exactly. a few different wines. Mm -hmm. And then I can just try something. I think that's the mm -hmm. best thing to do. I Rather than just go to your old trusty favorite. Yeah, there's too much good stuff there out there. There is. And it's there changing is. all the time. And the cool oh, thing yeah. is, like, you guys in particular are on the cusp of, you're always trying new things. You're bringing new things to her. Mm -hmm. You're bringing new things to me. So we yes. have customers coming in telling us that they read about this or they saw this or mm -hmm. there's a, actually, I don't, I don't watch regular TV. I watch wine blogs and shows <laughs> um, like a big geek. And so we're constantly reading. Mm -hmm. And I actually have brought wine in my stores from some of these wine shows that I'm watching. Right. Yeah. So yeah, there's yeah. always something new there's to try. Some great choices. So if you see these on your shelves, you know, feel right. free to buy them. <laughs> yeah, just be, it just depends on what you're in the mood for. A softer one, a little brighter, fruitier mm -hmm. one. Um, even this one. We I was going to say, there's one we haven't talked about yet. So <laughs> this, is, this is a fun wine. Um, it's I Nikki actually, <laughs> I actually had a customer that um, had asked us to bring this in, and she said, you know, it's a ruby red uh, grapefruit rosé. And I said, ruby red grapefruit rosé? What? 
so I bring it in. This is a couple years ago. Yeah. Um, I got to try it out. So it, it's one of those fun bottles. There actually is a ruby red uh, grapefruit slice on it. It is a rosé. So you have the sweetness of that. And I love it. The sweetness of what. the rosé. I love it. It is a sit <laughs> outside on your porch exactly. type of wine. You yes. have a little bit of fruit. I mean, it's just, there is no other wine like this. No, it is one um, of And I sell tons of it. And we have carried it for years. Yes, and they make the sparkling version. Yes, as which well. is actually going to be, is, I'm bringing it back this year. So we carry this one year round. And so the let me ask you, is, is would back. you say, number one, would you say that that's a sweeter wine closer? To, so if people like sweet wines, should they try this one? Or is it for people who like drier wines? Hmm. Or is it in between? Like if you are it's a sweet between, person, between. it's in between. So this is a good, but maybe, it's closer. Yeah. If, if you're yeah. on the sweeter side, this is a great entree to yeah. rosés. So yeah. it's, it's a good, uh, as your palate is improving, maybe you're thinking the sweet wines are getting a little too sweet. Mm -hmm. And you, and you need to step away. Yeah. Step up to but something. Maybe but something you don't like go to this dry. would be too dry. This okay. is a nice little step. Just but like when Yeah, and honestly, I don't, um, this is, like you said, it's perfect for sitting out on the end of the dock mm -hmm. or okay. watching the this sunset. After I don't even, I mean, this is not necessarily, I'm not thinking food pairing with no. this as much. It's just a glass because it's, it's just, fun. Yeah, I'm it's making fun. dinner. Unless you're pairing sit outside. Outside. <laughs> No, <laughs> no too, too much acid. Too much acid. I mean, maybe some fruits and strawberries or something, you know, but it's just just yeah. out on your deck. It's refreshing. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's true. <laughs> that's true. That's true. That's true. You can sure. tell some of my favorite mm -hmm. ones. Yes, this one is, this one was, they were all amazing. Oh, yeah. Good mm -hmm. choices. Good choices. They're just all different. So, <laughs> so how thought. about uh, for Memorial Day, Gwen, the last day of the month mm -hmm. of May, and then we will be back with a June um, video shortly. Yeah. At least as you guys can see all the new stuff coming up for summer. Yeah, so we'd be grilling at the end of the month. So what about yeah. rosé is for the end of the month? Gosh. That's a tough one. I mean, See, you got burgers, you got hot burgers, dogs. you got ribs, you got oh, you got yeah. rots. You know, one of the most classic pairings is rosés with like grilled sausages, sausage, mm, shrimp, that. that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah I it's, it kind of has that. Yeah, that would be a great combo. See, now I could do ribs with rosé, but I would do it. Mm, probably with the drier one. Yes, I think so. so because nice. you got the little yeah. you got the sugar, you got the molasses right. happening in the barbecue. Right, it's a little too sweet, so you want a little yep. bit more it's back acidity. To that balance. And by acidity, we mean that really dry that makes your mouth dry. So okay. I'm thinking that one for a barbecue for yep. ribs. Yep. But if you're it's talking I do burgers, dry. grilled shrimps, mm -hmm. grilled shrimp or brats oh. or something. So yeah, you know, I have exactly had notorious one. pink with my out uh, now. You know, Maryland, we are famous for our crabs, which is not mm -hmm. crab season yet. Yeah, well, it is, but it's not. It's not. It started technically today. Uh, today, but uh, but that's you just won't get crabs until yeah. Until that's that's just two months their pots out now. Yeah. But mm -hmm. yeah, you're, you're you're nice boiling your crabs, but that's my go-to for or either that or a sauvignon. Is my go-to for the uh, the crabs. Well, you know, it's funny because uh, they made a whole group of chef friends here last summer, and their request was they wanted they did a crab feast. Oh yeah. And they wanted rosé. Yes, I could see it. Yeah. Because again, you have all those spices like Old Bay. So in you know, Maryland, mm, right. we love our Old Bay. If you have all those spices and everything that's going on in Old Bay, you really don't want anything that is going to clash. That's why yeah, I, I usually do a Sauvignon Blanc because of the. And we'll talk about that in June, but the, the lemon lime. Yep. But I could see it's clean, it's fresh, it's I have bright. the Chores pink mm -hmm. with a little bit spicier. Yeah, mm -hmm. it'd be a good balance. I was just thinking for our ribs, we do dry rub. Oh, do dry sauces. Rub. You don't yeah. do so so spicy. It's, it's, yeah, I do both. So yeah. we don't do the, start the, the sweet dry. sauces. Uh -huh. It's a spicy right. thing, so yeah. for me it would be. Yeah, nice. I could see that yeah. one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then how about a burger or a steak? If you don't want to have the cab because it's maybe a little bit too hot outside, what would you say? See, I guess it's really, I would probably, I, you know, I'm going to go with this New Zealand guy. Are you? Yeah. 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 I think that would be perfect. I could see that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's very full bodied, mm -hmm. it, you know, it's got a, a full mouth feel to it. I think it would be great with a, well, like, a good, like a juicy uh, burger. Yeah. I could also see it with, um, if you're doing with your burger, you know, if you're having like mushrooms or mm -hmm. you're doing, cause I can't just caramelized onions. Yeah. Something I can't like just that. do a plain burger. I have yeah. to go fancy. Yep. So chipotle, a little chipotle mayo. Or I might make there. a salad with it. I might make a steak salad. I yeah. might make a, you know, who knows, a, a just a coleslaw or a potato salad or any number of those things. Yep. And I think I want a little bit more fruitier yep. with all of that. I could see even splashing that in to make a vinaigrette. <gasps> Ooh. Wouldn't that be fun? No, oh, but tell okay. us how. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's kind of your acid. So vinaigrettes are basically an acid and a an, an, uh, fat or an oil. Mm -hmm. So you'd use olive oil and a, a good healthy splash of that. And then if you needed to zhuzh it up with a little bit of extra 
um, you know, rice wine vinegar or something. It'd be great. I'm going home, going to start splashing <laughs> on some of my salads. Or you just drink it. Just drink yeah. it. <laughs> just drink it. <laughs> Pretend you put it in the salad. Little for the salad. Little for the salad. <laughs> right? Right. I was going to say. I'm impressed Still with the I'm impressed, impressed with the stopper there. <laughs> You really didn't think it would work. Well, I didn't think it was going to spill all over, but I thought it was going to dribble a little bit. No, no not at all. It. It's a really good one. Oh, well, that's hard. I have to choose. I'm going to say the Rodney Strong. I love, and it might be because um, this is, you know, I go through fads. Yeah. For phases, me. phases. I go through phases. phases. I shouldn't say fads because yeah. it's not a fad, but it's a phase. Like, yeah. I'll go through and I'll drink, you know, as much as I can and then something new comes along and I'm like, oh, that's my new favorite, right? But mm -hmm. they, this is uh, different from their last vintage. Their 2017 vintage is yeah. different. I love their 2017 and then I'm in love with their 2018. I think it's just amazing. that They, they um, just get better every year. And I'm amazed that they've only made this for two vintages. Is well, it just me? Pretty I impressive. Just, I, I do need strong. You think it's always been I there do, forever? You do. made it for longer, but I think we've only had it for two vintages because they oh, didn't okay. make enough bottles to sell. Uh, throughout the United States. Oh, sure, so sure. They, they, um, I could have sworn, yeah, last year was the first time I saw it. That, that we've had it in Maryland. But, okay. yeah, who knows? I, I really honestly well. don't know. But it's, it's amazing, and they should make more. Mm -hmm. And they should just drop some off at our doorstep. No, <laughs> no time to cook. We're, we'll all get it. I'm waiting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How about you, Carolyn? Which was your favorite? I'm so moody. I, I don't drink everything. I do. <laughs> it's yeah. hard to pick. It's hard to pick. It is, you know, it's a thing because from one day to the next, it's well, what are you what's eating? the weather? What am I eating? How do I feel? Right. Kind of thing. Yeah. What, what have I not have? tried before? What, what I do I have before? available? Yes. <laughs> I mean, when you own a liquor store, you got all of it available. I know. Yeah. I know. I just look. <laughs> yeah, I know. I do walk down the shelves. I'm like, mm, pretty what have I not had? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, we appreciate everybody visiting us for May. Yes. We really hope you guys visit us. For June, what are we gonna talk about in June? Summer wines. That so dreaded good. word. I'm gonna say the word. Carol, close your ears right now. Are you gonna talk about canned wine? We're gonna talk about canned wine. All right, all right. I know. I know. It's gotten better. It's gotten better. We it's can't better. talk about it's it until better. June. Okay. I, like, it, I am going to carry <laughs> canned wine this year. <gasps> I. You know what? I think not in the building. Alternative but, packaging. Alternative packaging. I think we're going to carry it on the boat because it makes so much sense. And I swore I would never carry it two years ago, and I was like, nope, done, yeah. not having it. And it's it's they really hugely popular. Up their game. Yeah, and we'll talk about it in June. Don't say anything more because we want to save it all for you guys in okay. June. But we're going to talk about canned wine. We're going to talk about alternative packaging, and we're yeah, going to think about, outside the bottle. We're going to think outside the bottle. <laughs> We're going to also talk about just again some of those summer fun barbecues yep. and oh you know, chillable reds Father's Day chillable reds chillable reds because mm -hmm. everybody asks us well if I put my red in the refrigerator is that going to bother you no they're actually what kind of red is it and there's some that are so amazing you know what I think one day we, one month we should do an episode on all those questions that people have. the myths the myths. Because, you know, do you only decant red wine? Why don't you decant white wine? You know what we should do is say, hey, if you're watching us, and we really hope you are, number one, hit subscribe because it's really going to help us out. Yeah. Yes. And also, please tell us in your comments what things you would like us to talk right. about. Yes. We are, um, well, we are winos. We love wine. In a good way. We, in a very Not good like way. like the brown paper bag way. But yes. yes. Right. No. <laughs> We're sophisticated. We, we show the ladies. Fancy glass wine. Right, and big fancy glasses. But we will not uh, do episodes where we get too complicated into um, verbiage or language. We're not going to do anything that's yeah. going to get... Terroir is going to be the worst that we have. Yeah. Sorry. We, you know, there's so many out there about that. They, they, they really get into the nitty-gritty of the wines, and even though we have certifications, and, and but we don't need to go into that. Right. Um, it should be fun and accessible. It should be fun. Wine should not be snotty. What? I always tell folks yeah. in class... Drink what you like. Drink, right. you know, don't be embarrassed by anything that you like. There are a zillion varietals of wine, and yeah. so try them all. Figure out what you like and own it. You it's know? fun. Yes, yes. Fun. It, it should, should be fun. Be fun. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So we want to make fun. Please let us know what yeah. you'd like us to do because mm -hmm. we would love to make wine even more fun. In that uh, end of that episode, I guess we should say 
Cheers and make sure we look at each other because we Cheers. don't want to Yeah, cheers. Cheers. Yeah. cheers.